The Domain Naming Service, or DNS, provides host name to IP mapping. It is a vital network infrastructure service for LANs, WANs, and the Internet. Every client on a TCP IP network has a unique MAC at Layer 2 and IP at Layer 3 address in order to communicate with other clients on the network. In addition, these clients can also be assigned a unique host name. It's generally easier to refer to a client by its host name than its MAC or IP address, so DNS takes care of mapping the client's host name to its IP. Both globally and locally, DNS provides a centralized hierarchical database of domains, computer names, and services for each client on a network. By saying DNS is hierarchical, we mean that different servers are authoritative for different areas of public and private networks. When a server is authoritative for an area, it holds the SOA or start of authority designation for that area. For example, ICANN or Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers and IANA or Internet Assigned Names Authority maintain top-level DNS servers for domains like .com, .org, .mil, .gov, and .edu. These top-level DNS servers are authoritative for their particular zones. When queries are made against them, they return the IP addresses of DNS servers further down the hierarchy. The FQDN, or Fully Qualified Domain Name, of a server such as www.google.com follows this hierarchy from right to left, like a Japanese manga. For example, if a query is made for www.google.com, the DNS server authoritative for .com refers to the DNS server authoritative for .google, which may then refer to a DNS server authoritative for www. This process is then continued down the FQDN until the desired hostname is found. DNS servers store different types of zones, and these zones store different types of records. A forward lookup zone stores A records, which map a hostname to an IP address. A reverse lookup zone stores pointer records, which map an IP address to a hostname. In addition, several other types of records are stored in DNS. SRV or server records map services to hosts. NS and Glue records map to DNS servers that are authoritative for a particular zone. CNAME records act as aliases for A records, and MX records map to mail servers. These are just a few of the different record types. There are several different factions and implementations of DNS. For example, the majority of DNS servers on the internet are Unix and Linux servers implementing a version of DNS known as BIND or Berkeley Internet Name Domain. Note the DN bind also refers to daemon in some contextual situations. Bind follows the standard method of implementing DNS in a single master model. This model allows a single primary zone which is writable and multiple secondary zones which are read-only. All changes to DNS records must be made on the server hosting the primary zone. These changes may then be copied to the secondary zones by zone transfers. Zone transfers can be incremental, IXFR, that is based on individual record changes, or a complete set of records can be transferred as an AXFR. Multiple secondary zones implementing the standard single master model of DNS provide limited fault tolerance and load balancing. If the standard primary zone goes down, the secondary zones can still provide name resolution. However, records can no longer be modified or updated. Active Directory implements its own version of DNS known as Active Directory Integrated, or ADI. ADI DNS offers many features and improvements over standard DNS. ADI DNS follows a multi-master model. As such, every DNS server can modify, add, and delete records. This allows for greater fault tolerance and load balancing. ADI DNS does not use zone transfers. Instead, DNS record information is copied and synchronized throughout Active Directory by standard domain controller replication. This offers several advantages. 1. Updating is automatic. 2. Conflicts are handled through serial numbers and timestamps. And 3. Traffic is encrypted via Kerberos version 5. DNS is a vital and critical part of Active Directory infrastructure. Without it, nothing can be located or found. Every function of each domain controller in an Active Directory forest deeply depends on good name resolution. Before you set up DNS, give your server a static IP address. One of the first things we want to do um, you know, before installing any kind of DNS um, is configure a static IP address. And so first I'm going to go here to Network Properties, Manage Network Connections, and you know, any vital server role, you don't want the IP address changing dynamically through DHCP. You want to make sure it kind of remains the same. So pick something compatible for your network, you know, um, 
something that won't create an IP conflict. Um, and let me do. I'm going to implement uh, the loopback. 127001 will be the loopback. Um, for an, and since, since I'm going to set this up as a DNS server, it, it will be able to use itself for name resolution. Okay, and then of course I know my network's gateway. Um, so you want to configure those static settings and when I do that, let me open a command part real quick. And Okay, let me just go through here and right, so here's my static IP and here's my gateway and then I'm using the loopback at you know for name resolution or a name query. I'm gonna flush my resolver cache. Um, okay. And at this point I don't really have any DNS settings set up other than my loopback. So again if I were to ping yahoo.com can't find it because I don't you know I'm no longer using my dynamic DNS on my router via DHCP and I haven't set up DNS yet. So let's let's go through diff, you know several different types of DNS um, and the first thing we'll do is just a, the simplest setup a cache only DNS server. One installing the DNS server role. Okay, for a cache only DNS server, we first need to set up or implement the DNS server role. So I'm going to go to server manager. I have a shortcut, but if you don't have a shortcut, it's right there on the start menu. If you need to find it, go to roles and then say add roles and then go to server roles. Then you want to go and find the DNS service. In this case, I want to implement a DNS server. So I'm going to click next and next and install. And this will go through and configure the components in my 2008 server that I need for a DNS server. Okay, now installation succeeded, so I have the components required, and now I just need to go configure my DNS server. And when I do that, it'll add a couple of you know shortcuts to my start menu, and you know different management consoles and snap-ins and things that have to do with managing DNS. I'm just going to copy this and make a shortcut and paste it on my desktop. Two, setting up a cache-only DNS server with forwarding. Okay, the the first type of DNS that we'll set up or install is a cache-only. So I'm going to click on my shortcut and open it up here, and I don't really have to set up anything for a cache-only DNS server. I don't, I don't even have to configure a zone. The only thing I might want to do is set up a forwarder. So I'm going to right click on my server, go to properties and forwarders. And just to enable hostname resolution out to the internet, I'm going to add the dynamic DNS of my router. So I need to add the, in this case, my gateway, my router 199.207.13 and 1 for me. Of course, that would be different for you, but um, I want to do that. And this, basically what this is saying is, okay, anybody who tries to resolve anything that's, you know, outside of my immediate subnet, send all those packets out this way. So I'll be heading out to my default gateway, and um, basically not only that, it's, it's saying, hey, if I try to resolve a host name for anything that's not authoritative, um, you know, for whatever my local domain is, um, you know, then it's, it's going to go send it out. And... There's basically two areas here. It, it will use this to resolve host names to IPs, and also there's root hints. But um, you know, a lot of people say, well, why set up a cache-only DNS server if you're not going to configure zones? And you know, true, you're not getting the full functionality with DNS server, but it will still improve uh, host name to I, you know IP mappings and, and lookups. It'll improve your response time. In other words, maybe I have a hundred clients on my network or a thousand. Well, if one of those clients looks up the IP address for Google or Yahoo, you know, they want to load it up on a web browser, first time it might take a few seconds because I have to go out and query maybe some top-level DNS servers through ICANN or IANA on the Internet and, and find the IPs for those servers. But then it'll cache it in its cache and 
of course, if I want to, I could, let me go here and here. If I want to, I, I could clear that cache, but, um, you know, sort of like your local resolver cache. And then the next time any of my clients, if they were using this cache only DNS server, for them, the, the lookup would be much quicker. Let's test that out. Remember before, we had no name resolution at all. We tried to ping like a host name, Yahoo or Google, and we didn't get any response because our DNS server is just a loopback, 127001. And I'll just show you that IP config just to show you. And again, notice my DNS server is a loopback. Now that I have a forwarder set up, I can actually do this. Um, okay, and notice I'm getting my replies. It'll actually cache that response. True, there, there is a local DNS resolver cache on each client, which I could get via IP config display DNS. But there's also, you know, there's a, a DNS cache in my server as well. And so that's sort of the idea behind a cache only DNS server, just implementing forwarders and root hints and helping, um, you know, speed up performance and things on your network.